Good evening, I'm Craig Andrus. Thanks for joining us again on Call the Mayor Wichita. Your chance to call in and ask the mayor anything you want. We've got a lot of topics to talk about, so let's just jump right in. Mayor, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Yeah, always good to be out here with you. It's a busy time of the year. Springtime yes. finally came. Finally. Yeah. I understand you were golfing finally. You don't I, have much I, time for I that. I finally right? got in a round of golf. So it's all good. Okay. I promised him I would not ask his score on the air. Yeah, so I will yeah not. it was ugly. But it is that time of year. Look, yes. you can call us right now, 316-491-5787. You can ask the mayor any question you'd like, any topic, nothing out of bounds here. So go ahead and call us now. You can also get us on Facebook. And for those of you watching on YouTube, after the show has already been aired, feel free to hop on Facebook and, and get us your questions. Mayor, I do know that we had a neat event with the baseball stadium Yes. Home plate, it wasn't, I mean, it was a literal, a home plate was placed exactly right. where it's going to go. Right. You got a chance to sign it. That yeah, was a, a so. pretty good event for everybody. So the kids from League 42 came out and helped us with the event. They also uh, were able to sign home plate, which was pretty awesome. They're going to park home plate, the one that's signed now, in the uh, baseball museum. But... Um, that was a real home plate. I didn't realize how heavy those are. They're <laughs> yeah, I, heavy. They're, you, you held it up. It's, and a, it's I, a load. Well, I got a chance to sign it, too. That was kind of fun. I really yeah. enjoyed the event. And that is actually where it's going. Good to see the walls are you know, starting to go up. You've right. got the dugouts in place. Uh, a lot of people looking for it. I'll, I will ask you this. This is a compressed time frame. We've had a lot of questions asked about, will this thing be on time? Will it be on schedule to open for the original baseball game when it was scheduled? And will it be on budget? Where do we stand on budgets with that right now? Are we going to so be on budget? Two great questions. Okay. So it's a design build process. So Perfect. we go through these uh, guaranteed maximum prices. We are now at 70% of the stadium being uh, guaranteed maximum price. And we are at $1 million under budget. So you're actually under at this point. One million dollars under okay. budget. How about time frame? We it, it, at, a, one so, year from now. So we I know, will have I know the folks uh, out there working I'm their talking. tails off are going to hate me saying this, but we're ahead of schedule right now. You may have just jinxed it. I know. If well, we you a, asked. I, <laughs> you if asked. We, if we get a long run of bad weather, I know that can hurt hurt construction. But, uh, if, so steel's supposed to go up at the end of May. Soon. And um, you know that'll start framing it in, and it, it really is coming together nicely. That was good to see. Glad to see you signed home plate too. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Call us 316-491-5787. The other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, as as you people start to call in, was um, Union Station. Yeah, we're going to have that, that thing. Fabulous. It, it, I, if you haven't seen the renovation here. It does look spectacular. And look, Union Station hasn't been used for a long time in Wichita. A lot of people have complained and said, look, here's a building that's been sitting vacant. Right. Um, and sat vacant for probably too long. And now it's got life in there. Not only have they totally renovated Union Station, they are uh, adding different phases of new development on the back end of that. And their ribbon cutting is in two and a half weeks. Coming up soon. Coming up soon. Well, what is the boundary for the city? Is it... A CID, what, what is the involvement with the city there financially? So, so the city financially on Union Station, we did a tax increment finance plan. TIF. TIF, and that, which means that all of the incremental new property tax revenue then goes to public infrastructure only, because it can only go to public infrastructure, and helps us build all of the public infrastructure that feeds Union Station. Well, and I guess too, uh, we've heard the argument made, and I'll go ahead and bring this up too, but we've heard the argument made, well, that's on, on new, the TIF, but is that kind of taken away from the tax base of, of things, say, downtown? No, not at all. In fact, uh, it will add to the tax base significantly and what we have found in different parts of town. A great example is 96 in Greenwich. You know, that was built with star bonds. And what we're seeing because of what's built there, everything around it, just outside the Starbond district, has, has come in in droves and added significantly to the tax base. And same thing downtown. So we will, they've already acquired some new office space that uh, I went out the other day and, yes. and broke ground on uh, just a week ago Friday. And, you know, that's not in that same tiff. It's... Um, it will be new taxes on on um, the city and the city coffers and so all of that is generating revenue that we haven't seen before so union station spaghetti warehouse hilton garden inn ima wants to come downtown um, 
all of that's adding additional revenue into the coffers so much so and this is this will come on the tax rolls but understand this because of the growth and the momentum we keep talking about that we ended last year two and a half million dollars more in revenue than we anticipated which we just simply put into reserves into the reserves okay well april so, you are on the show now you have a question for the mayor about the baseball stadium go ahead april So we we can barely hear you, April. Yeah, April, it is a little hard to hear you. You're talking about the route that you take around the baseball stadium. Well, if, we, if April's we, not still there, uh, we've had questions come up too about the routes around the baseball stadium, and again, McLean, where is it one way, or is it two lanes now instead two, of the four? So it would be we've, two lanes we've started just with that. in that section uh, at the baseball stadium, and so you'll be able to take McLean still. If you want to take McLean, it's available with the exception on uh, event days, game days. We may shut that off just for pedestrian traffic, but pretty easy to navigate around. And then Kellogg is much improved. If you haven't been through Kellogg, especially going west where uh, the 235 and Kellogg interchange is finally completed, so much easier to navigate through that now. It's a, it's a really nice job that they did and, and doesn't have the tight spirals anymore. Yes, you don't have the collisions. The it's, uh, it really is good space. Well, I've talked to the chief about that and he seems to think that's a good direction to go. Uh, we have another call, and you can call 316. The number is 491-5787. Ask anything you want. We have another caller. Joan, you have a question about parks. Joan, what is your question? Uh, my question to the mayor is, uh, what is the structure going up at the east end of uh, what was Nasker Park, taking up the park space there? So the structure on the east end is actually a uh, new retail and office complex that's not built on nasker park land it's actually built on private land unfortunately nasker park went through um, you know some different sales over the years and we actually sold the park it got conveyed to private uh, ownership and and so the park had to be adjusted when the new owners bought it and had it resurveyed and said, hey, Nafsker Park sets on our private land. And so they had to shift the park. And so the building's not on the park. It's actually an office complex. I heard that there's a restaurant that's already planning on going in there. And then of course the spaghetti warehouse behind it, the old spaghetti works building is all apartments and now open. Oh, they're open now. Yeah, they're renting them out. So it's okay. great space. I, I heard that they were going to be open. It's good to hear that they're open. Call the mayor, Wichita, 316-491-5787. Please hop on, hop on Facebook if you want. Just get out your phone and ask us a question. We've got a lot of different topics we can talk about. I, one of the things, things I wanted to bring up, again, is, is kind of financing. Where do we stand with money for, for some of the, the, the different water features that we're expecting? I know swimming pools has been a hot topic. It's been right. an issue a lot of people have asked about. But right. where do we stand on, on swimming pools? So and, we're in great shape. Not, a, not only is our budget in pretty good shape, I mentioned we're $2.5 million more um, received than anticipated. But we've now decided to renovate and add to six swimming pools and keep six of them open. And then the other pools that exist today will get flipped to splash pads. So we're going to spend about $2 million a pool to renovate them, put zero um, entryways so it's easy to walk into the pool, more exciting additional features, and then splash pads around town that we don't have aquatics parks. And, Plainview will get a splash pad. They don't have anything down there, and so a great place to cool off. And you know, splash pads have a longer season, a longer day of yes. operations, yeah. and they're free to the public to go utilize them. Do we get one at the baseball park? So they're talking about some of those features. <laughs> you know, they're, that's my pet thing. I, I like get to see it. One they're out talking there, about so some of those things, but it's going to be a you know some pretty neat amenities that we're seeing come together. But so we have the money set aside in the budget to build out the, the aquatics pools and splash pads. Um, 
larger than we anticipated uh, last year and then the libraries same way we are going to keep the branch libraries open add to them we're looking at doubling the space at Westlink that gets a lot of usage and building uh, some new space for the South Library that, that's been in Linwood and see if we can find a better place for that library to exist that will be nested into a neighborhood better. Now with the libraries, where do we, where do we kind of find the money and the funds for that to, to so expand they're all in, on? So they're all in it? the uh, capital improvement plan that's that we um, approve every year and, and so we will continue to, um, you know, take those dollars and, and um, earmark them for both libraries and pools and those kinds of amenities that are most important to people. And so everything's saved. People can uh, rest a little easier. Okay, well, 316-491-5787, that's the number. James, you have a question about uh, crosswalks. James, go ahead. You are on Call the Mayor of Wichita. Yes, sir. Thank you for letting me talk to the mayor. Uh, I don't understand why we're putting bricks in the crosswalks. And now I noticed at Pawnee and Meridian at that intersection, they re when the bricks come out, when they get broken and fall and come out of there, they're putting asphalt in and not replacing the bricks. Now, I know it had to have been expensive to put the bricks in to make it look better, right. and now they're putting asphalt in there. Right. So, so what's the logic on this? So, so great question and some things that we learned that the bricks don't hold up to snow removal very well. And so we've had some issues on the design down there, and that's why we're trying to find a better method. So the reason why we have done that to um, you know, change the walk areas different from the street, it's, a, it's an ADA issue. So that not only does it look different, it feels different. So those that are visually impaired and having issues will understand the surface of the walkway better and it's different from the roadway. And you can see and, that downtown in certain spots if you've ever right. watched a person with a, a sight disability uh, using right. a cane to get through, they depend on the kind right. of the terrain and the right. feel the of the terrain that and the feel, but it also yeah. helps with motorists to fully understand where the walkway is and, and tend not to cross over it as they pull up to the uh, light. And so too often people in a car don't fully recognize where the crosswalk is because it blends in with the road, but now if you differentiate with bricks or some other surface, sure. now they know to stay back behind that walkway so pedestrians can get across easier. So it serves multiple purposes, but we've got to find a better method that doesn't uh, get impacted by snow removal. Snow removal is a big deal. I'll ask you about sand right. in a minute. That's a pet peeve of mine since I'm a motorcyclist, but hey. Um, Absolutely. 316-491-5787 is the number. Paul, you are on the show. You have a question. Uh, what is your question? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for this opportunity to speak to you tonight. Sure. Um, I was just wanting to know, what's the time frame for maybe seeing some artist rendering or land propositions for the new convention center and performing arts center? on the uh, east bank, east side of the river. Thank yeah. you. So, so here's what I like. There's a group of uh, citizens and agencies that have come together to say we want to drive this issue forward. And they've gone out and they've hired someone to kind of tie all of these old plans that we've looked at and tie them together and master plan the east bank. The beauty of that is, um, It'll be driven by the community more so than driven by government. And uh, once they put a master plan together, then, um, then we'll figure out in terms of what the renderings and those sorts of things look like. We really don't know yet what might happen with Century 2. It can be repurposed. There's a lot of things we're looking at. Yeah. Convention Center, yes. we know that we need to build new because it doesn't work in a round building. And, and so to put all of that together and figure out where it needs to be placed over there on the East Bank and how we save much of the East Bank for gathering space for the community is all going to be sorted out through these series of meetings and master plans and public meetings. And they said that process could take about eight months from today. Eight months, so I'll check back with you in right. seven and a half months. Right. All right. 316-491-5787, that is the number. Charlotte, you are on the show. Welcome. What is your question for the mayor? 
Uh, I have contacted the city a year or so ago because our streets in Brook Hollow are in terrible shape. Okay. And they came out and they powered, treated them and filled some cracks, left them worse than they were before. They have no plan, as near as I could understand, for doing our area. I said, will you be doing it in a year or two years? And we're just really a lovely area, but our streets are so terrible, Charlotte, let me it's not a good way. Let me ask you this, Charlotte. Have you talked to your council person that represents that area? I have not talked to the council person. I, I believe some people in our area have. So but I, I went direct to the street people at City Hall to yeah. find out what the system was, and I didn't get any answer. So because the council person's actually the one that gets to decide uh, how the monies are spent in the budget and within how that it district. gets within that district. Yeah. And so, Charlotte, I would really encourage you to get with your council person directly. You can also go on to the city website under Public Works and... Um, there's a section in there for streets and it will show you which neighborhood streets we're doing because we took 10 million of the Hyatt proceeds and we put it into neighborhood streets um, so that we could catch up on just what you explained, years and years of neglect and we're trying to get those fixed up. And so we're doing a number of neighborhoods this summer with the Hyatt proceeds and then adding on to that out of our regular budget. And so. Um, the best way to answer your question and get the answers is straight from the council person that represents that district and if you're not sure who that is just call the mayor's office and they will guide you to the person you just use the reference call the mayor call the mayor i love it that's the name of the show you can see the number right there on the screen 316-491-5787 please call in we're taking your questions if you want to get off facebook I have a Facebook one right here. All right, perfect. Okay, question for the mayor. Would the city ever change the Wichita flag? I already think I have a consensus idea of, where we're, of, of what the answer might be, but would we ever consider changing the, well, you know, that? It's, it's pretty popular right now. It seems to so, be very so popular. So uh, I think what people need to realize is that flag's been around since 1934. I don't think a lot of people recognize 1934. or realize that. It, it, and it was a contest done at that time with the mayor and the city council, and they, um, they wanted to instill um, some ownership and pride in the community, and so they went out for a contest, and they... They had some folks uh, submit plans, and the, this is the flag that was chosen. It has great symbolism. That's uh, you know the center of that uh, is the symbol, Indian symbol for home. The rays represent coming and going freely, oh. and so it uh, yeah. has some great symbolism to it. But certainly, over the last couple of three years, oh my, I, people have used it as a everywhere. point of pride, and yes. you see it painted on the sides of buildings and garage doors and every apparel that you can imagine. Well, not just apparel. I have a friend of a friend who has a tattoo. Tattoo, yeah. Uh, that's outstanding. Got it on her shoulder. That's outstanding. That's very cool. So, and if they had changed the flag, we'd have to change our logo? I think, yeah, maybe for yeah, the show. we have a small budget. <laughs> that's true, we do. <laughs> but we make it work and we're glad that you're here. Absolutely. So you've got the number on the screen, 316-491-5787. While we're waiting for the next call, I will ask you this. What about sand removal? Is it in the budget? Can we get it? So we do. And in fact, after um, the season, so that we're not you know, trying to fight ourselves between snow and sand removal. So, so once the, the winter season's no longer needed to use sand and, and different materials on the roadway. Then we send the, the street sweepers out um, and cover the main arterials where we have sand, uh, sanded the roadways. And then we have a regular assignment of street. You can see that too if you go to Public Works under street sweepers and it'll show you um, where the current street sweeper's at and you, you can click on it and it'll tell you when they're coming by your street. Did not know that. Do they, I suppose they have a, do they so, do that in advance? So, they, do it, ahead, uh, so they, they, so in neighborhood streets, we get through every neighborhood, I believe twice a year. Main arterials, we do it often, you know, more often, depending on how much we had to do during the winter season to sand them. How much sand, yeah, right. I, I know it's a concern to motorcyclists right. as we're getting into that season. Oh, absolutely. Kind of transitioning yeah, so out of that. So you'll see street sweepers out there all over town every day of the week.
Saw some pothole people out. That was good to see the other day. They, uh, they do a really good job of filling oh, those. They, there's an app. There if is an app. you can tell people about that, because I used it. And it so the nice they, they thing did about the, the app that you Got can download the for the city of Wichita, you can download an app and um, you can take a picture of the pothole or you can describe the location of it and hit enter and it goes directly into the queue of our public works and they will get out there immediately. I've had some people say that within three or four hours of them going using the app and sending it into the queue for public works, the truck's out there fixing the pothole. I tend to believe that. Three days for me. I got tired of the pothole. Yeah. I just right. chewing my car up. It was right at a corner where you couldn't get around. Right. You know how it is. You can't get around some of these. You have to drive and you're driving. Right. Um, so I guess the other question is, it for Android and Apple both because a lot of times it is okay it is yeah. it, good Android Apple good you and can download the app obviously free in the app store so you yeah, free in the app store and right. I, you know another question that I had while we're waiting for people to call 316-491-5787 the numbers there on your screen give us a call but the other question I guess I wanted to get to would be when it comes to kind of a, a master plan for what we're going to do for both banks of the river mm -hmm. uh, there's been some discussion on the baseball side but there's been some discussion on the other side too what are we doing with some of the buildings? And I know the city doesn't own all of those buildings, but what do we right. do with a building that's no longer in use? How can you encourage that to be used and, and kind of push downtown forward a little more? Yeah, so, so we're seeing private development come in and take over much of those buildings. So the old, uh, what we call the state office building has been purchased by a private developer and they applied and, and have been uh, approved through the city to, to renovate the facade and, and get some uh, special assessments, kind of like how we build neighborhood streets out with special assessments. And they're going to uh, totally renovate those buildings and add new life to them. And so we're seeing that all over the core of the city. As I mentioned, Cargill's new building, Union Station, Spaghetti Works, Hilton Garden Inn, will open up here in about a month and IMA is looking at moving downtown and of course some old buildings that were converted into apartments uh, and then you the old um, the old state office building along with some of the buildings that surround it are all being renovated right now there's people in them and they started renovating about a week ago the old Commerce Bank building well, now what's at 150 the old, North Main. What is the old Commerce Bank building going to be? So I've heard that they're talking about apartments on okay. uh, the upper floors and retail space on the first floor. Okay, how about a grocery store? So there's some talk about that. <laughs> so I think you're going to see some of that come together very soon. As long as yeah. it's, as long so as it's, it's pretty exciting right? because people are investing and we have uh, a group out of Kansas City called EPC that's getting okay. ready to build a new that's retail um, office complex and apartment building just uh, just south of the new library. Okay. 316-491-5787. That's the number. You can see it there on the screen. We're glad you have joined us we'll, for the we'll show. We'll give some advertising to our host here. Make sure that Turn it right. Channel 8 is there. there we direction. Go. I guess I should get mine out too then. Uh, you can see the number on your screen there. So uh, go ahead and give us a call. We do have another caller. Lyle, you have a question for the mayor. Welcome, Lyle. What is your question? Hello, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for taking my call, my good friend. You're welcome. Um, hey, I uh, got a question. What's the status of Pawnee Prairie Park? And then I have another question. You can answer it after that. Is is you know I've been to a, quite a few stadiums around the United States here, and uh, do they have any talks about any transit system from like Old Town? to the new baseball stadium in process and yes. I'll hang up and Two great to questions. You. Thanks Lyle. Two really good questions. So um, let's tackle the first one because it's very timely. This Saturday is a really busy day for many of us. Um, I have an event uh, that I'm going to speak at starting at 7 a.m. Saturday morning for Heart Springs and then we have a ribbon cutting for Pawnee Prairie Park Saturday. So the park officially uh, opens with a ribbon cutting on Saturday. We put about a million dollars of new equipment into that park and it's uh, provided a great playground for the neighborhood there. And, and, and then still you have the bike trails and the horse trails that are now separated better than they were before. And, and so the community can enjoy them. And, and so we appreciate what the vice mayor has done. He, he set aside those funds that he used. So each of the council members also received 
a million dollars from the Hyatt proceeds that they could use in their council district how best they felt that it would represent their community. And, and the vice, he's vice mayor right now, Blue Ball, put his million dollars into Pawnee Prairie Park. And it's uh, so come out Saturday to the ribbon cutting. I think it's at 10 a.m. and and enjoy that. Uh, as far as transit, we are planning on using the Q line, and it will wrap around the baseball stadium in some manner. But uh, you know the Q line operates um, with trolley buses, and you'll see them come along the Douglas Corridor Avenue from Delano all the way to College Hill. There's a bus that comes by at least every eight minutes. That's the big success story that we've had over the last couple of years. So if you go back just a couple of years ago, we were only seeing about 4,000 riders a year ride the Q line. So we altered the times that it operates. We altered uh, the cost of it. It's now free to get on because we use sponsors. And the first year that we made those changes, we went from 4,000 riders a year to 120,000 oh, riders. So, if so people, are using it and we want to also utilize that to bring people right to the front door of the ballpark along with uh, some other opportunities from some parking areas where they'll just take small almost golf, golf cart like trolleys to carry people okay. back and forth. Well speaking of golf we have a question about that. Yes. You are on Call the Mayor. John you have a question about golf. Go ahead you're on the show. Yes, uh, thank you for taking my call, and thank you for doing this program. Um, I was wondering uh, about the status of First Tee and McDonald Park Golf Course. I came back by there uh, yesterday evening, uh, coming home from dinner, and it looked to me like um, they had quite a bit of grass yet to grow after doing all that dirt work, and, mm -hmm. and I knew they wanted to be open by the time school was out so that they could start training young golfers. Yeah. And I'll hang up and answer your, listen okay. to your Thank answer. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. That, that again, is um, uh, all funded privately. People that really care about golf in our community and certainly and again, getting young people introduced young to people, the game. First T is first T is, is for uh, and I don't know the ages, so I, shame sorry, on me. I don't either, but it's, but um, it's to build to, some interest in to golf build with our young some people. Interest in golf with young people, and they start at a pretty early age. Okay, I don't know the uh, but yeah. they have some indoor and outdoor facilities over there, so it's going strong. I don't have the. Um, the uh, timelines for you on when all of that opens up. I haven't had anything um, in my inbox yet about any kind of ribbon cutting for it, but I bet you we can find out and make sure we post that on our website or uh, you might be able to call our golf uh, department and get some of those answers. But first tee's going really well. We appreciate those that uh, care enough to uh, fund that out of their own pocketbooks and, and get kids introduced to the game of golf. Very good. Well, 316-491-5787, the number's there on your screen. We have another caller. Alana, you're on the show. Alana, what is your question? Yes, a few months ago, uh, I heard on the news that there was talk about um, gunshot detection system going around the uh, Wichita area mm -hmm. and I was wanting to know what's the progress on that and if so will that include uh, video surveillance as well? Good question. Good question. So, so yes we have a pilot project that we're doing right now for a gun detection system that's a proprietary system that our own IT people along with Wichita State University has um, built and it's a very innovative system and it can detect not only where the shot came from but if the shot came from a moving vehicle it can tell you which direction the vehicle's traveling in and how fast the vehicle was traveling when the gunshot took place. Um, so it is just a pilot project but it does not include any video surveillance it just simply detects gunshot and it can tell you if it's a gunshot or fireworks. It can detect the difference. That's good to know. And police will tell you, too, that if you get the direction the car is traveling, a lot of businesses, a lot of people have video so that they can go and look into right. it as well. Right. So, all right, 316-491-5787. The number's there on your screen, as you can see. We have another caller. Dustin, you are on the show. What is your question? Hey, Mayor. Uh, first off, I want to tell you that I appreciate all your hard work and the well, progression you. that you that you and the city has taken with the baseball stadium and some of the other projects. 
uh, being a young professional. I know in the years past, it seemed like, you know, having, you know, nice amenities and some of the stuff that a lot of people are looking for and we go to some of the other uh, local cities and towns, it's nice to finally see that Wichita is taking a big step in the right direction. Well, thank you. Uh, my, question, my question for you is, is, I've heard about this Crystal Prairie Lake in the northern part of town. Yes. Uh, can you elaborate some more on that, kind of yeah, what we can happy expect? To. And, right. and the happy to. Great questions, and thank you for the compliment. We, uh, we want to grow this city so that young people will choose Wichita. That next generation will stay here, and we can... Uh, encourage uh, growth and opportunity and quality of life and all of the amenities that we're competing with from Kansas City to Oklahoma City to Denver to Omaha to Tulsa and so it is a competitive thing for cities to do and continue to build on quality of life. Crystal Prairie Park is a park that we're developing out uh, on the northwest edge of town. It sets at 96 and Hoover Road roughly. Um, they're, they're harvesting the sand that's building the lake right now and uh, best guess is that park land will not be handed over to us for a couple of more years while they're still harvesting and it's going to be done in phases so they'll give us the I will call it the south half of that park in about two years and then they'll continue to harvest sand on the north end of that lake and that should be handed over to us we think within five or six years after that but we want to build a number of park amenities in there that include trails and bike paths and a, and a swimming beach and some other amenities. And it's, uh, it will be a great place for people to enjoy the outdoor summer activities, but even in the winter, a place that you can go utilize and walk and ride your bike and do all of those things that uh, we, we know are important to a lot of people in our community. And here's what's the impressive part. So they're talking about building some opportunities for people to learn how to water ski out there with a mechanical water skiing system if we can pull all that together um, but the the size of that lake that they're harvesting will be the same size as lake afton oh that's good so size. people can kind of use that as a comparison okay. so that lake be will be the body of water will be about the same size as lake afton so it'll be a nice addition but it's going to be unfortunately several years before we even get it handed to us from the group that's out there harvesting the sand that carves the lake itself. Big Lake. Okay, 316-491-5787. We do take questions on Facebook. I've got another one of those, but uh, we will get to more callers since we have many ready to go. Susan, you have a question for the mayor. What is your question? Welcome to the show. Yes, the area around Joy Van Park and Plainview, what, is, what development is the city planning or looking at for that area? So I can't tell you about Joyland specifically, but I can tell you that Plainview will finally get a pretty impressive splash pad park, aquatic splash pad, that um, we're going to build in the Plainview neighborhood for the first time ever. They don't have any aquatics park in Plainview, and so they will get one of these new, I think we're going to spend nearly uh, $800,000 on the new aquatics park in Plainview. As far as the Joyland space, I haven't heard what's happening. That's still under private ownership, and so whether that uh, gets purchased and eventually gets developed, I think there's opportunity there for someone. But uh, looking forward to the new aquatics um, park that's going to go into Plainview. Very nice. Okay, do we have a Facebook question, and then we'll get to our next question on the air, but you can find us on Facebook as well. Question, Mayor, does the city plan to build a new homeless shelter? So what we are doing in terms of the homeless, uh, the, the chief of police, Chief Ramsey, and Sheriff Easter have come together and they formed a committee with about 25, 30 agencies that service uh, a wide variety of needs that often we attribute those needs to needs that the homeless have. They're focusing on mental illness and drug addiction. So they will focus on temporary housing and permanent housing, but also treatment for that. So we're kind of trying to follow what we call the San Antonio model because San Antonio has been very, very successful. What we need is resources. So we're reaching out to our friends at the state of Kansas and to our friends in Washington, D.C., and we're trying to partner with them and encourage them to help us provide some resources so that we can come up with the uh, 
with the shelters, but more importantly than just shelters, many of those people need help. Yes. They need help with drug addictions, with a variety of mental illnesses. So we're trying to fix what we understand is maybe the root of the problem. Well, and it's, uh, you know, not all have those problems, but there are many that do. If you talk to people out on the street and ask them, why are you homeless? They, some will tell you, I've got some, some issues. Family doesn't want to deal with me anymore. Right. So, um, you know, kudos to the, to the agencies that are working on this. And I know there are, well, you set up to 30. Yeah. There, there right. are literally dozens of agencies, agencies that do you know, some help for And the some people so, just need a hand up once in a while. Every now and again, absolutely. All right, All right 316-491. 5787. That is the number on Call the Mayor. It's on your screen. We do have another caller, I believe. Uh, sorry. Uh, is it Mike? You have, a, you have a question for the mayor about fireworks. Go ahead, Mike. You're on the show. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. Mm -hmm. Last year, the day after the 4th of July, you were quoted on one of the news stations as favoring uh, illegal fireworks. Um, this is extremely disruptive to thousands of us veterans, sure. and it's just been, it causes me tremendous mental and emotional no, we, dis we get distress. That. Right. And, and it takes me several weeks to come back down. And I'm just extremely uh, upset about uh, your comment. Can you uh, comment on that, please? Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm sorry you're upset, and I don't know how it got misinterpreted, but. I'm never in favor of anything that's deemed illegal. And so I would not be in favor of illegal fireworks activities. And so we instituted a new system where we are policing fireworks in our city and we have now and, and plan on continuing this through this next season, only allowing fireworks that go no higher than six feet in the air. And if you catch someone that uh, is shooting off illegal fireworks we're not going to allow that to happen and we'll get out there and we'll write them a ticket what we've done is in the old days we we said the ticket was five thousand dollars but we never wrote any of them now the ticket is 250 dollars and we're writing those and you are right i talked to we, the, we the, wrote a lot of tickets last year Stuart bevis and he yeah. said uh, with we, the fire department he said right. we're not only going out and driving around as much as we can and still maintain our fire readiness but he said we're what? We're writing those tickets. Yeah. Now, my question is this. If you get enough tickets, where will that money go eventually? Will it go back into fire prevention, or, or what do you do with so, some of those funds? So right now, we're using the funds to help offset the cost of policing the fireworks. Okay, that, make, so, that makes sense. Yes. So that way, we're not out of pocket to police yeah. them. So the funds are going back in for education, for policing, for getting out there, ensuring that people are not shooting illegal fireworks, because we get it. I mean, there's too many vets that are going through what you're going through and thank you for the service to our country but there's also pets that that uh, have a tough time <laughs> what I have said in the past though is there a place a safe place that we could cordon off that's away from people that's a safe environment for those that want to shoot something taller and, and so should we would should we find that safe place for people to shoot something higher than six feet if you have the fireworks at home, I know for a lot of people it's tempting to just go ahead and light them off. Oh, you're just going to light a few. But, but if you do it now, you're, you're, you're more than likely going to get hit with a pretty stiff oh, you, fine. Yeah, you will. Yes. That, that is for sure. Look, 316-491-5787 uh, is the number. You can call the mayor. It's there on your screen as well. You can find us on Facebook. And again, for those of you who I know watch the show on YouTube afterwards, you can go ahead and get on Facebook and send us a question in advance. We will go ahead and use it. We are uh, waiting for some more calls. Um, next caller, you are on the air. What is your What is your question, Fred? What would you like to talk to the mayor about? Yes, uh, that new program where you want to have to send out a police officer, a mental health person, and a fireman. Right. To, uh, when is that going to begin, and are they going to be riding in like police cars, or are you going to be riding? Uh, so, our trucks are, can, can you explain a little bit of that? Yeah, so, so we're going to start with a pilot project and some other cities have found this to be very successful where they team up an EMT, a police officer, and, um, and then a, a, a firefighter to uh, address some low acuity calls and, and not tie up big fire trucks and all of those resources. And so we're looking at putting them in a, uh, a transport like a like a truck for the most part that they can have some equipment and supplies that they may need to have but um, 
So we'll, we'll, it won't be a traditional fire truck, it won't be a traditional police vehicle, it will be a, a hybrid in between. And, and so we're gonna see how that works. It uh, appears that some cities have been very successful at these um, new teams that can go out and answer some of the, as, as we say, we have some frequent flyers and people that call in sure. on a regular basis that yes. uh, need some help. And so we're gonna provide that help in a different way that doesn't tie up our fire resources like it has in the past. Well, and I believe, oh boy, maybe I have the market incorrect, but I believe in Shreveport, which is essentially the same size as Wichita, there was a pilot program like this that started. Some of the challenges that they had with this were, look, sometimes we have that hybrid vehicle that goes out, but when the vehicle gets there, it may not have everything that is needed. So I guess would a second unit be called, it was the question, if more is needed. So. So um, we're doing a couple of things. So we ha will have this new team that responds, but, but the police officer, the EMT, and the, and the um, firefighter are actually on the call side of, of the situation. And so they're helping decide which equipment needs to go. So we will respond in different vehicles for low acuity calls, but the, but the police officer, the, the pilot project, they're gonna be at the call center uh, taking the information down, listening to the call, and making that decision right then on what equipment should respond. I know Wichita has done very well with its 911 call center. They've been recognized for it before. 316-491-5787, that is the number to call. You can see it on the screen. We only have about uh, five minutes left here, so now's your chance to get your question answered by the mayor. Mayor, what too, when it comes to um, the baseball and the structure, what is happening with spending the other side of this money. I know we've got some money allocated right now, but how do we come up with the funds for this uh, a bridge that's gonna go over the water? It does sound like a wonderful feature, but where, where's that side of the money coming from? So, so it will also come from development. And so all of the finances that we're utilizing to build out the amenities out there are coming from Star Bonds, number one. Number two, uh, we have a TIF district there also, tax increment financing. We have a little bit of money program from our CIP, and then uh, there are some CIDs that are planned for the new development that exists there. Now, how long would a CID, again? So, there, CIDs can last up to about 20 years. Okay, so it could be funded over a long time. And of course, right. there are sunsets built into those where- All it, of them are sunsetted. Are sunsetted. Right. Um, what's the update on that? Have we seen designs yet on that, of, of what that might- No, not the private that? side of that. Okay. We, haven't, we haven't seen any new renderings or updates, but we are continuing to go out to the public with new renderings for the ballpark itself. And okay. I'm, we oh, just presented that to say, the design council okay. about two weeks ago and I'm just a viewer at home and I'm wondering how do I get a look at those designs and how do I have a say right. in what the city's doing here? right so we're reaching out to the community in a variety of different ways but the design council's been uh, very um, much a part of you know the, the footprint for the ballpark itself and two uh, with that when it comes to getting that will that be added on after the opening, or do we have a time frame yet on when that bridge would go there? So the bridge is gonna be um, several years later. Okay. We wanna have a better understanding of how the whole area gets developed right. and before we decide exactly what that bridge needs to look like, how big it is, and where it takes people to and from. We need to master plan the east side so we know where the east side of that bridge is going to land. But we will have green space still yes, on absolutely. the Yes, absolutely. There's gonna be great gathering space. So all, the river corridor, is all green space. So from the street down to the river, it's all public green space. I saw some trash out there the other day. We should we should go clean that so up. So there's a river cleanup that's happening here in two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Will you be out for that? I will be out there for that. What if you work up an appetite while you're cleaning up? Cargill's going to feed you. Oh, that's good to hear. Cargill, yeah, good. Good community. Yeah. Good neighbor. So they're hoping Glad to have a thousand volunteers oh plus my. to come out and clean up the river, but or Well, I've already talked to some people about it. We're hoping that somebody cooks for us, so that's good to hear. Yeah, so it's uh it's gonna be fun and Cargill's gonna cook hamburgers and hot dogs. So if you come out and volunteer and clean up, you get fed. Seems like a great idea. Absolutely. Uh, well, I, you know, the other question too, when it comes to the overall design plan of, of both banks right now. What are the unknowns? What are the things that we don't know right now? Because I do know I have some questions about what is an unused space 
what will it turn into? And yeah. when it comes to getting kind of a master plan together, do we know what's happening with the retail side of things? Are we getting people to sign on the bottom line? Do, are we, sh are we so, seeing some interest? Right so now? we're certainly seeing interest, and, and that's why you're seeing people come from Kansas City and invest Good. their dollars in Wichita instead of investing in Kansas City. The other way around. We've seen that for so years. So we've seen the other way around yeah. for years, but now we're seeing investors that are in Kansas City that know that they can spend their dollars in Wichita and get a better return on their investment in Wichita. And that's refreshing. And so, yes, there's lots of interest. We don't have it master planned yet. So once we get through the master plan, we'll see what how all of that comes together. But it's, it's exciting right now between... Um, you know, the ballpark, the new rails to trails from Seneca yes. down to the river, the new EPC apartment oh, complex. Apartment complex down south, we're, uh, uh, soon we're going to have that aqua splash water park. Seneca and 235, yeah. it's coming together. I went down there, I got a look at it, and yeah. It looks pretty neat. I wish we'd have had something like that when I was young enough to go to a water we're park. We're about to have that, too. Yeah. It's exciting to see that, you know, uh, Gander Outdoor and Camping World they're literally walking distance from that, so you can yes. go see that pretty soon. Those are scheduled. I believe that the water park, the Aqua Splash, is set to open sometime by the end of the month, maybe the 30th, right. we don't right. know. And then the it's coming together nice. The other two pieces will open probably yeah. in June. So Isn't it nice to see investment in the south part of Wichita? It's great. Love it. It's and so not part. only is our downtown becoming more vibrant, but South Wichita. Uh, out in the far northwest part of town, we're seeing new investment. Of course, Greenwich and 96 is growing like crazy. It is. And, and, we're, and, and we have more parks land in North Wichita than any other sector in the city. Did not know that. Okay, we've got something to end the show on. We appreciate your calls. Call us again next time on Call the Mayor of Wichita. Mayor, thank you for being here. Thank you, Craig. And we're going to leave it with, you. well, I'll let you introduce this. It basically, it's really well produced. It's called the... State of the City. State of the and City. And so you will get an opportunity to see our State of the City coming up in about two seconds. So thank you for joining Wichita us. Wichita has always served as a place for innovators and thank visionaries you. to write new chapters in our history. From our early days as the air capital to our adopted moniker of the Opportunity Capital, Wichita is known for carrying an entrepreneurial spirit and the fearlessness to embrace growth. Our leaders were proud people, and so are we. The sense of pride remains at the core of every decision we make, every building we build, and ingrained in every program we develop. As a community, we must embrace the challenges we face and forge ahead into the bright future that is just around the corner. All we have to do is walk steadily toward it. I'm Mayor Jeff Longwell, and I'm happy to update you on the state of our city. Thank you for taking time from your busy schedules to tune in on city television, online, and on social media. I'd also like to recognize the members of our city council for without their leadership, we would not be able to develop a broad range of projects and programs that move our community forward in the areas of scholarships and job opportunities for those who need a little extra help and for countless quality of life initiatives that make each day a little better. The ability to live well is a key attractor for Wichita. Supporting quality of life is crucial as we poise ourselves for growth. The recent livability.com study measured employment rate strength over time, affordability, and community amenities. And Wichita was ranked in the top cities for work-life balance. There is a new energy that is developing in the city that is anchored by increased development and investments. One, two, and three. We've begun building a beautiful new stadium that the fathers of baseball in Wichita would be proud of, and we look forward to our new AAA team playing in the spring of 2020. Along with baseball, the arts make our community more well-rounded and attractive to those who are contemplating moving here. After it was in jeopardy of being torn down, we listened to the community and helped save the historic Starlight Drive-In and preserve an institution that is also fond memories for many Wichitans. Speaking of childhood memories, we heard from the community and have developed a new aquatics plan that not only keeps six neighborhood pools open, it also allows for splash pads to be built throughout the city for extra summertime fun. There is no doubt that entertainment is important. 
We are evaluating what to do with the Century 2 building and how to best address our need for both convention and performing art space that will lead us into the future and will honor our past. We have also developed a regional sports complex that is already hosted in its first large-scale regional tournament in a climate-controlled setting. Investing in arts and entertainment isn't just important to maintaining our quality of life. Studies show that they contribute a conservative $94 million to our community each year and make us more attractive to employers and workers. Our economy is headed in the right direction and so is the growth of our workforce. We are much more diverse than 10 years ago and are vigorously investing in and continuing to diversify our employer base and recruiting new sectors and talent. Our partnerships with Project Wichita, the Greater Wichita Partnership, REAP, Workforce Alliance, and the Chamber of Commerce, just to name a few, are helping us to recruit talent, increase training, and improve the perception of our city and region. We work to help with training programs that can help citizens stay competitive and train tomorrow's workforce. Job skills and preparedness training by WSU Tech, Workforce Alliance, and our own housing and community services help us grow our trained workforce, which makes us attractive to large employers such as Spirit, Coke, and Cargill. The Wichita Public Library, in partnership with Grow with Google, provides computer skills training to help citizens compete in today's technical workforce. We recently launched a program that lends Wi-Fi hotspots to the community to help bridge the digital divide. We're in a good spot. Wichita's unemployment rate is at a historically low 3.5%, and WSU forecasts that Wichita is expected to see an across-the-board increase in overall jobs this year. We continue to work to recruit new employers, talent, and opportunity for our region. Ensuring we have a strong infrastructure is crucial. We are keenly focused on investing in our neighborhood streets as well as our arterials each year because we want to make your commute smoother. We're thrilled at the high ridership of Bike Share ICT and our free Q-Line trolleys. And their success drives our interest in exploring all sorts of transportation, including passenger rail. We are shoring up our water infrastructure by preparing to invest in a new facility. I'm proud of how we've extended the life of our current facility by over 20 years, past its anticipated lifespan, and how Council was able to work together to determine a payment schedule that provides for generational equity. So far, I've addressed a lot of tangible accomplishments, but nothing matters more to me than having a community that feels safe and knows that when they need help, someone from the city will be there to assist. Wichita now leads the way in Kansas by arming its police force with body cams for every officer. This year, we went one step further by updating them so that we can better protect our officers and increase our transparency and accountability to the public. In late 2018, we also launched a shot detection system pilot program to detect gunshots throughout the city and improve response times. Now, we are taking the lead with the way this technology can be used in other crime fighting areas. We continued to increase our support for public safety and now have 60 more commissioned officers on the street than we had three years ago. Many of these people are focused on addressing the root of crime through community policing efforts. And Wichita is proud to have been rated number one in its fire safety efforts. Only a few fire departments across the country have received this highest of designations. So it should not come as a surprise that it's a very difficult designation to achieve. This number one rating is good news for Wichita because it sends a signal to insurance companies that Wichita places a lot of emphasis on fire protection, who then lower your yearly rate on insurance. We are also partnering with Sedgwick County to take a comprehensive look at the behavioral health issues because this greatly affects our ability to use our law enforcement personnel in the best way possible. Our homeless outreach team continues to connect homeless individuals with services and programs to help them not only find shelter or food, but to address the root cause of homelessness. In fact, the HOT team, as we call them, has been recognized by safety officials at the White House as a model program 
for the rest of the country. There is a major gap in state and local behavioral health funding that has a direct impact on our crime rates and the workload of our officers. We are requesting the state to help fill this gap with significant financial and agency support. This would include improvements in how the state handles releases for probation and parole and decrease the amount of paroled violent offenders in our community. The safety of our community continues to be a key focus for the council. Just five years ago, we were behind the rest of the country in terms of recovering from the economic downturn. We needed to diversify our employer base, invest in our infrastructure, shore up our safety, and focus on our quality of life. And now we have a lot to be proud of. Thanks to the leadership of a strong city council, dedicated public servants and community organizations. I look around this great city and I see many tangible things that we can all be proud of. I'm not alone. Project Wichita surveyed almost 14,000 Wichitans and over 66% said they are optimistic about the future of the Wichita region. All too often, the core city services of public safety, infrastructure and economic development are forgotten as we go about our daily lives. Until, of course, something goes wrong. The pothole we encounter on the way to work reminds us there are people taking care of our roadways. Officers come running to help when most people are running away. Keep us safe. And caretakers who remove graffiti from our favorite parks keep this city beautiful. Our 17 city departments serve with pride and are a source of pride for this community. The strides we have made this year are staggering because we have something no other city has. The potential to involve, the potential to create, and the potential to transform this city as only Wichita can. I look forward to sitting with you side by side with our sleeves rolled up, shaping our future together and further developing a Wichita that we will be proud to pass along to our next generation.